Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. About six weeks ago now, I suppose, um, I started talking about the 10 ox herding pictures and we went through the first four. The ox herding pictures are sort of uh, metaphorical, uh, an allegory for the typical person's entry to practice. So we got up as far as <clears throat> the fourth one last time, which was catching the ox. And that's sort of when we get the, the first glimpse of what it is we think we've been looking for uh, once we realized there was something even to be looked for. So uh, the fifth one is herding the ox or taming the ox. And that's when we, we really pay attention to our practice and cultivate it. And then uh, the sixth one is coming home on the ox's back or riding the ox home. And that's basically there's there's no more struggle. There's no more uh, concern about gain and loss in practice. Uh, we begin to see that um, our ordinary mind, our one mind is uh, the mind of the Buddhas. We still maybe have a, a slight feeling that, yeah, I got this. So it's not going all together, but it's an inkling. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting close, you know. Seventh one is uh, the ox is forgotten leaving the man alone or the boy alone as the case may be and that's basically uh you can look at it as the uh the river has been crossed the raft may be discarded at that point we're not attached to the the sense of gain or attainment or striving for something at that point. The ox and the man or boy are both gone out of sight. No man, no uh, ox. That's often represented by either an enso, the Zen circle, or just a blank page. Personally, I really like the idea of the blank page because that sums it up like Vimala Kirti's thunderous silence, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, that's where the, the duality of separate person and, and ox drops away. The ninth one is returning to the origin, back to the source, returning to the source. Uh, everything in the universe is already completely undefined and undefiled and pure. It's already as is expressing its Buddha nature. Even our sense organs are capable of revealing the truth to us moment by moment. And I kind of zipped through all of those because the 10th one so far as I'm concerned, is the important one. And that's entering the marketplace with outstretched arms. In the Five Mountain Zen Order and others, our, our practice is don't know, and our direction is how may I help you. And whether it's in a hermitage temple, lay person with a job, ordained person with a job, whatever, wherever, our practice and our activities are centered around helping all beings, helping everyone we come in contact with. Now, here is where it gets tricky 
because over the last, I don't know, going on two years now, I guess, we haven't actually been in the marketplace all that much. All of the habitual ways we thought we had uh, in order to help all beings outstretch our arms in the marketplace, a lot of them have been just ripped away. You know, the habits that we have built up over countless lifetimes, uh, from society, from family, from our own actions, all that karma goes into formulating our habit energy is the, you know, alaya vijnana, uh, to use the Sanskrit term for it. It's that just basic gut habits we have. I wake up in the morning because an alarm goes off. Normally I would, I don't know, if I went to a grocery store, I would put the shopping part a shopping cart back into the little thing that they have to put shopping carts in. Um, little things like that, that we just do, right? And in this Sangha, we've got people who, you know, the furthest east is uh, our Dharma sister, Malintha, who lives in Sri Lanka. And then working out from there, I guess Kevin is the nearest to East after that in Rhode Island. And then I'm in Massachusetts. And then we got Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and we got Ohio and DC and Texas and uh, North Carolina. And uh, we've had people from California and our habit energies are not necessarily going to be the same right? The habit ener energy that Malintha as a mom in Sri Lanka has is going to be somewhat different than um, Mike's, who's a student in Ohio, so far as I'm aware. He's got an EDU email address, so I'm, I'm going with that. But in order to go into the marketplace with outstretched arms at this point is where we get pulled back from being able to rely upon our habits, right? Our habits have been pulled out from under us. They don't necessarily work anymore. We can't rely on habits to get through a normal day every day because they're that they're habits they're empty there's something that out of convenience sake we've fallen into <clears throat> but now in this world of zoom now in the world where we're potentially isolated how do we go into the marketplace with outstretched arms how do we go with our bodhisattva vow of sentient beings are numberless, we vow to help them all? The bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara or Kwanseom, that name translates as she who hears the cries of the world. It can be really easy to tune out those cries of the world when we're just sitting watching TV because we can't go out anywhere and actually have any interactions with any people. This is the kind of time where we're called upon to be excessively mindful. I prefer to say it's the time when we really have to pay attention because there may be someone 
whom we're aware is having a hard time maybe, but since we aren't necessarily going to be able to physically see them, it's like, yeah, I think it's time for a little bit more of that old Netflix and chill. We have to hear the cries of the world, even if we have to search out the person who's doing the crying. If we know of someone who is having a hard time, we have to reach out, hit them with the outstretched arms as we enter their private space. The Five Mountain Order <clears throat> is uh, different from a lot of orders because from the start, uh, we were known as the uh, Monastery Without Walls. Everything is online. Our training seminary, Buddha Dharma University, all online. Student-teacher relationships, to a great extent, online. I started out with my teacher in, in person. <clears throat> there are some others who've done so as well, but I would say probably the lion's share of student-teacher relationships have been done remotely. And maybe that means we're a little bit better suited towards hearing the cries of the world through a Zoom call than some others might be. I don't know. I think the point is that we do have this at our disposal. Those of us in FMZO, in theory, know how to work it. And if that's the tool we have to help all beings, we should use it. We need to pay attention and use whatever the situation calls for. Sung San was always big on situation, situation, relationship, and function. What's the correct thing to do in a given situation when dealing with a, a specific person? It entails paying really close, intense attention. So even if it's over a $30 camera and it has a microphone built into it, maybe, or whether it's actually in a grocery store or a parking lot or wherever we might be at work, in class, with the family at home, it's our duty as bodhisattvas to pay attention to the situations, to the relationships, and to the functions. Hear the cries of the world and help all beings.